Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you tempo mapping in Reaper. Now, the idea of tempo mapping is to take audio that's not lined up to our grid and move the grid around the audio, which is not the other way around. We're not going to be adjusting our audio. We want to map out our grid lines to match the audio in our project. Now, there's a few different reasons you'd want to do this. Let's say you recorded your band and you didn't play to a click. So your tempo is going to fluctuate throughout the song. By tempo mapping it, we can keep the entire song right in the grid without changing the way the song was played. Another purpose for this is if the song has tempo changes. I have a track here, which is an instrumental, and the artist wants me to add a click to it. But I can't do that if the tempo isn't consistent. So I need to map it out first to make that possible. Now the first thing I want to do and it's not necessary, but it does illustrate how tempo mapping works. Let's go up here to view and let's show the master track. The reason for this is if we go to the envelopes right here on the master track, we can view the tempo map by making it visible. And it becomes an envelope just like anything else in Reaper, where we can create points and move them around change our tempo. But notice what's happening. As I change the tempo, it's changing the audio. It's actually time stretching it. So it's gonna sound different. We don't really wanna do that. We wanna change the grid lines, but keep the audio intact. So let's undo that. And the next thing we're gonna do is go to our project settings. The reason it was time stretching is based on this right here. This is the time base for our items, and it's set to beats, position, length, and rate. So it's going to time stretch as we change the tempo. We can avoid that by switching it to time. And now, if we create some tempo changes, it's going to move our grid up here, but it doesn't affect the audio. It's still going to sound the same. Now let's find our tempo. Now the music I have in front of me has a tempo change. It starts out at one tempo over here, but it gets faster over here. So we have to map that out so the grid lines match the audio. So let's start off by dragging the first attack at the beginning of a bar. I prefer to start at bar three. I don't want to start at the beginning because I want to count off. Now it's important when you're doing this, we're only doing one track, but if we had multiple tracks, we would first create an item group for all of them so that when we move things, they all move together. But this is just one track, so we don't have to worry about that. So we'll drag the beginning of this, get closer, right to bar three, right here. And now with snapping turned on over here, we can click, and it's right on the bar, and then we're gonna split it by hitting S. Then we're gonna find another bar later on and split that as well. Let's go a few bars into it. Right there seems good. Let's go right to the beginning of it. We'll split that. Now we have a section defined. Now we're gonna hold down shift and double click it. And that creates a time selection based on the length of that item. So now with this selected, we'll go up here to insert and go down here to measure from time selection. Now there's two options to choose from. Measure from time selection, detect tempo, and measure from time selection, new time signature. If we choose this, it's gonna create tempo markers, but for one bar. Let me show you. So you created a tempo marker from here to here, but it's only one bar long, from bar three to four. And the tempo is about 29 beats per minute. So that's not right. So what we want to do instead is choose the other option. Measure from time selection with new time signature. We'll choose that. 
and we'll keep this at 4-4, but Reaper knows that it's four bars. If it's not correct, we can always change it. And then it shows us the tempo, which is about 115 beats per minute. So if we hit OK, it creates tempo markers for this space, starting at this tempo and ending at the tempo. So now let's turn on the click and see if it lines up. It's pretty good, not perfect, but one thing we need to change is our counting. It starts at 120 and then changes to 115. We want to start at that tempo so that our counting is the same tempo. So let's change this over here by double clicking it. Let's make it 115. Let's heal the audio by double clicking the track, right click, and go down to heal splits and items. And that gets rid of our splits. But because we changed the song tempo in the beginning, our audio is no longer on the grid. So we need to move the audio back so it starts right on the bar. Right in line with bar three, our counting should be in time. Let's hear it. That feels better. Now I'm pretty sure this is recorded with a click, so I'm going to change this to 115 exactly. We can also delete this one here by holding on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac because we don't really need it. And let's see how that lines up. And that's our problem right there. That's where the tempo change occurs. So we can start it at bar 10 and have it go to bar 11. So let's go to bar 10 and split it. It's right on bar 10 because snapping is still turned on. And then we're gonna zoom in to the beginning of the next part right here. Split that, zoom back out, hold on shift and double click to create a time selection and go back to the insert menu and we can choose the same option. But for this tempo change, it's only one bar. So we can just choose this one as it'll now work. And that created a tempo marker right there at about 122 beats per minute. Let's see that change. We'll heal this. Notice up here in our tempo map, you can see the changes. It matches up for our space, but it seems to go off afterwards. So let's start at bar 11 by splitting it. Let's go a few bars to tempo map the next section. Let's go right here, split this, zoom back out, hold on shift and double click it to create a time selection. Go to insert, measure from time selection, new time signature, and it should be one, two, three, four bars. And it is. And it's about 121 beats per minute, almost perfectly. Because like I said earlier, this is recorded to a click. It just has a tempo change we need to map. So let's hit OK. And let's see if that's tighter. We'll heal this. Let's hear it from over here. That feels pretty good to me. 
So the rest of the song is going to stay at this tempo. We just had to put in or map this one little change right here. So I think we're good on this file. But let me show you another example. In this example, I have a drummer that's playing a drum part, but he didn't play to a click. Let's hear what it sounds like. Now, I don't want to quantize this to make it tighter. I want to adjust our grid to match his performance. So we can do that the same way. Once again, we'll start off by zooming in to that first hit and dragging it right on the bar. In this case, bar three. And then we'll split right here. Then we'll find another section and mark off that bar. Let's go about four bars. Zoom in. We'll split it right on the downbeat. And now we'll create a tempo map based on that performance. We'll hold down shift and double click, create the time selection, measure from time selection, new time signature at about 117 beats per minute. That feels pretty tight, but like the last time, our count in is set to 120. So let's heal this first. And let's change this to match this one. We'll copy it from here, double click over here, and paste it. Now, once again, it moves everything over. So we need to go in to this piece and drag it over to bar three, like this. So now we have a better count in going into it. It's starting to fall off over here, because like I said, the drummer wasn't playing to the click. So let's tempo map it going forward, starting from bar eight. Let's split at bar seven, Zoom in to bar eight, split it here, create the time selection. And this time let's go up here to the ruler and right click. And the same option appears down here. Create measure from time selection, new time signature. And it's one bar long and it's at this tempo, which is quite a bit faster than it started at. So you can see the tempo change right here. Let's heal it again, and let's hear it. And now we can go through the whole song, mapping it out like this, which is gonna put the audio on the grid without changing the actual performance. Now, another way we could do this, and I'll show you in the space here to make it tighter, we could zoom in to bar nine, where there's no tempo marker, Click right here and insert a tempo marker. Then we can zoom in further and see if it lines up with the transient. It's pretty close, but if we'll make it tighter, just go to the tempo marker here. Let's move the cursor. This is the tempo marker right here. Hold on control on the PC or command on the Mac. And if we move it, it moves the grid as well. So we can place it running the attack to get it perfect. And the other tempo markers stay in place. Let's do it here as well. Go to bar 10, insert a tempo marker, zoom in closer. Let's move the tempo marker right to the beginning of that attack. And that's another way to work to map it out just inserting tempo markers and placing them on the transients. So that's pretty much it. 
That's tempo mapping in Reaper. It's very useful for creating grid lines that match our audio without having to quantize the actual performance or without actually changing anything we hear. So I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!